Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. Welcome to another adventure in pure mathematics. In this playlist, we've seen how actions of Lie groups give representations of the universal enveloping algebra. And in this video, what I want to do is I want to use this idea to relate the universal enveloping algebra of SL2C to differential operators on the predictive line P1 over the complex numbers. Okay, so to do that, let's uh, set up our notation here. So SL2C, that's going to be the uh, Lie group we're looking at. In fact, we want to think of this as a complex algebraic group. So it's uh, not just a, a real manifold with a compatible group action. It's actually a complex manifold with a compatible uh, group action. Okay, and so this, of course, naturally acts on C2, um, say with variables X and Y. And since it also commutes with a scalar multiplication, it also acts on P1, um, the projective line with homogeneous coordinates x and y. And uh, perhaps a better way to see that is that there's an equivariant map. So how do we construct this P1 uh, here? Well, the way we do that is that we take a quotient of C2 minus the origin point here. Okay, and then we have a quotient map phi. And what does that quotient map do? It sends x comma y to just the uh, ratio x to y. So the projective point uh, with homogeneous coordinates x and y. Okay, so this is an equivariant map. And so since it's an equivariant map, uh, uh, you also have SL2C acting on this in the natural way. Okay, so let's uh, remind ourselves now about the Lie algebra of this. And remember the Lie algebra will also act on this C2 by differential operators, okay? And if you're looking at that action on C2, how does it work out? So remember, this is three-dimensional over the complex numbers. So we can pick three uh, basis elements, E, F, and H. And the way you write those differential operators, it's quite nice. It's uh, E is X, D, D, Y. F is Y, D, D, X. And H is X, D, D, X minus Y, D, D, Y. Okay, so that's a very, very simple way uh, of looking at that. Okay, but you've also got an action of SL2C on here as well. Okay, and um, it'll be compatible with the action here because this is an equivariant map. Uh, so you can also look at differential operators here. Okay, so let DP1 be the ring of global holomorphic differential operators on P1. Okay, and then uh, what we'll have since uh, this SL2C acts on here, there'll also be a representation of USL2C via differential operators on P1. So in other words, a algebra homomorphism from the universal enveloping algebra of SL2C to differential operators on P1 like that. Okay, and the natural question is, well, what is this map? Okay. So we're going to have a look at that, and it's quite uh, simple to see what goes on, and uh, we'll do the calculation right here. Okay. So the easiest way to think about this is to just think of this projective line as just the usual complex plane with a point at infinity attached. Okay. So that uh, complex variable I'll call z. That's going to be y divided by x. Okay. And this will be the affine patch um, away from z equals infinity. So this is the whole of the projective line minus the point at z equals infinity. So we'll just look and see what happens there, okay? So um, it will turn out that what the behavior there will tell you the behavior on all of P1. Okay, so for example, we have uh, this element F inside SL2C. Okay, so it's inside the universal enveloping algebra as well. And you can say, well, how does that F act on some holomorphic function F of Z like that? Okay, that's a natural question to ask. So let's compute this. So. Since this is compatible, we can use this setup here. <coughs> F is just y d dx. And you're um, applying this differential operator to F of z, which is um, z is y on x. So you just uh, perform this to, uh, derivative with respect to x. Use the chain rule. So you've got F prime of, well, this is z here, F prime of z, times y d dx of, and then the chain rule says that you also have to differentiate one x with respect to x. So you've got f prime of z. Um, okay, let's write that down. f prime of z is something we have. f prime of z. You've got the y here. And then you've got the derivative of this y and x with respect to x. And you've got a y as well. So there's a, another copy of y there. And the derivative of um, 1 on x with respect to x. That's negative 1 on x squared like that. Okay. And then you just rewrite everything in terms of z. And as you can see very nicely, it is some function of z. Okay, because you have a y squared on x squared, it's just z squared. 
So at the end of the day, uh, what you have when you apply this differential operator F, or this element F of SL2C, the corresponding differential operator on the projective line, what does it do? It sends this F to um, minus Z squared df dz. So in other words, what it does it do to that uh, function f, that holomorphic function f? It um, applies the differential of operator minus z squared d dz. Okay, so that's the image of f inside here like that. Okay, so we'll find that psi of f, that's minus z squared d dz. And you can do a similar computation for this uh, differential operator here and this differential operator here. I've already done that for you, and uh, what the result is, it's quite easy to calculate. Psi of h turns out to min be minus 2z d dz, and psi of e, even simpler still, is just d dz. Okay? So they're very clearly differential operators on um, uh, c of z. In fact, they're global differential operators on p1, and we know that because that's how the theory is set up. Okay? So they're actually global differential operators on p1. So that's very nice. Okay? We have now this map, which is quite explicit, and we can talk about this. So the next thing I want to do is I want to look a bit more carefully at this ring uh, D of P1. Okay, what is it? So we've got some elements in here, okay? Um, psi of F, this minus Z squared D dZ, um, uh, minus 2Z D dZ, and D dZ. And of course, you can take linear combinations, and you can take uh, composites of these things as well. Okay, but what else um, is there in there? Okay, so to answer that question, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a fairly general uh, differential operator on CZ first. Okay, so let's make it a first order differential operator. Uh, okay, so it's D equals G of Z, D to Z. Okay, and the question here though is that this is a nice differential operator. If G is a holomorphic function of Z, Okay, then this is a nice differential operator on this F1 patch, but not necessarily at infinity. So what we're going to want to do is we want to examine, well, what's going on on the other patch? And in particular, um, is it well defined at infinity? Okay, so let's look on the other patch, which is a copy of C, uh, where the variable is Z inverse, which I'll call W. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Let's have a look at this differential operator and see what happens here, okay? So the differential operator here is D, Okay, now let's just change variables over to W. So Z is uh, the inverse of W. So you have G of W inverse uh, for your G of Z here. And then D to Z, I can uh, now rewrite as DW to Z, D, DW. Okay, so the G of W inverse is still here. I can compute DW to Z as just a minus uh, Z to the minus 2. And then D, DW is still over here. Let's convert uh, everything over to W, so we see what's going on on this C uh, subgroup W patch. Okay, so there's the G W inverse here, and this minus Z to the minus 2, because W and Z are inverses, this is just the negative of W squared. Okay, so that's what you have. So what you would like, of course, is that uh, the, the key question is, when is this also a differential operator, well-defined differential operator at infinity? Okay, so we want to look at when W equals zero. Okay, so that's when Z equals infinity. So you want this still to be a differential operator. Uh, now here you've got uh, the D, D, W that's come out. So you just need basically this coefficient out the front to be holomorphic at W equals zero as well. Okay, so the problem is that because you have a G of W inverse, this could have a big pole, right? So uh, this is going to be... Uh, you have G of W inverse, so you can um, write it in terms of some um, power series, I guess, uh, in the neighborhood of infinity. And then, uh, well, you could have a pole there, and that pole could mean that this is not defined. Fortunately, you've got a W squared here, which means that you're allowed to have some poles, okay, and it'll still be well defined. Basically, what this saying is that because there's a W squared here, as long as your pole has order at most two, this will still be well defined at uh, infinity, at z equals infinity, w equals zero. Okay, so that's the upshot shot of this little calculation here, is that when is this uh, differential operator on C z also well defined at infinity? It's also well defined at infinity if uh, the or of the pole of G at infinity is at most 
2. Okay. So what that means is that what is g of z? If the order of the pole at infinity, the order of the pole at infinity is just basically uh, means that it's just the degree of the um, polynomial. It has to be a polynomial, and that polynomial has to have degree at most 2. So in other words, that g of z is just uh, uh, has at most degree 2. It can be quadratic, linear, or a constant term. Okay, so they're the only possibilities for uh, differential operators of this form, first order differential operators, okay, but that, um, so I'm excluding constants, um, just the functions here, um, to be inside here, to be globally defined, okay. And what's interesting when you look at this is that, well, actually, we've seen all of these differential operators before, okay, more or less because, well, uh, if you have just uh, a2 equals minus 1 and these two are both 0, we just get psi of f here, okay? And to get the, this, uh, the term which has a, uh, a z term here, but the others are 0, you can use psi of h, okay? So uh, that gives you the z d dz. And to get the d dz term, which is given by non-zero a0, when the other two are 0, uh, you just use psi of e. So in other words, every such differential operator of this form here, every such a global differential operator, uh, it's just a linear combination of these. And so since uh, you can combine these, okay, you can also look at products of these, what you'll find actually is that there's a surjective map. This map here that we want to study is actually a surjective map from uh, the universal enveloping algebra of SL2C to the differential operators on P1. Okay, so you have this very nice uh, relationship between these two. Okay, and um, this allows you to uh, uh, say a lot of things about this. So immediately, okay, uh, for example, it means that if you have any um, module over this ring of differential operators, that will give you a module over here. Okay, and because this is surjective, uh, the relationship between the module theory here and the module theory here is quite strong. Okay, more precisely, uh, the modules here correspond to the SL2C modules which um, annihilate the kernel of this map. So it's also good to know what the kernel is and this is something that you can calculate. It takes a little bit of work to do so but it turns out it's generated by this central element here. Okay, And that central element is the one which is uh, actually quadratic. Okay, It's a second order differential operator Okay, and it's given by h squared plus 2h plus 4 times Fe. Okay. So in that way, we have a very strong relationship between USL2C and these differential operators here. Unfortunately, that means that this differential operators on P1 only captures the part of the universal enveloping algebra where basically you've modded out by this ideal here. But um, there are ways of modifying this, so twisting the construction here. And what that will do is that you still have a subjective map but this kernel changes. So you can look at different parts of the universal enveloping algebra that way. And that gives rise to a very interesting st study of uh, twisted differential operators and using that to study the universal enveloping algebra of SL2C. I hope you've enjoyed this adventure in pure mathematics.